Hello all. Today we'll talk about real world range and the comparison between two driving routes. Let's begin. In my previous LinkedIn post, I asked your analysis which one of these two routes is more efficient. Let's discuss about this in detail. For understanding the efficient route, it's very important to understand where the energy is going. For a vehicle running on road, there are two major forces acting on the vehicle. One is the aerodynamic force. Second one is loading resistance and driving resistance and driving losses. Apart from the inertial force and the um, gradient force acting on the vehicle. So these are the two major forces on the vehicle. These two forces combined is called total vehicle resistance force defined as co-zone force also. They can be defined in terms of A plus B plus C square, right? And if you plot these, uh, if you plot these forces with respect to speed, you will find a quadratic line, right? Now, this co-zone force changes with with mass change or with the rotor resistance change, and it shifts up by a constant value throughout the curve because the CRR into mg is independent of the velocity in terms of force, right? Or the other drive line components, you get an offset, constant offset there. Now, if you change the CD and frontal area of the vehicle, right? If you increase it, the vehicle go bulky. So you'll find that this force is diverging in nature because the aerodynamic force has a V square component. In it. So the force will increase quadratically in V square proportionately. So if you talk about this, there are other uh, energy demands also from the vehicle apart from the drive energy. Imagine you are driving your vehicle in very cold condition. Then there is a requirement of cabin heating, which consume energy. In another case, if you are driving your vehicle in hot summer, there is a requirement of battery cooling and, and cabin cooling, which also consumes energy, right? So this extra cooling and heating load is coming on the battery. It has to be supplied by the battery itself. This is additional load. Let's understand individually first. Consider a case in which you are driving a electric vehicle with 30 kilowatt hour usable battery. You are very happy driving the vehicle with AC on, AC is also on. In first case, you are just sitting inside the vehicle. You are not moving at all. Consider that 1000 watts of power, aux power, is draining from the battery that is to cater the requirement of compressor load blower load the cabin blower which is the the condenser fan then the infotainment system and all the controls combined consider average thousand watt of auxiliary power is being consumed by the battery and in this case since you are sitting inside the vehicle there is no driving requirement so drive power is zero based on the 30 kilowatt or usable battery it will take 30 hours to drain the battery Right? In this case, the range will be zero because you're not moving at all. And efficiency will be zero kilometer per kilowatt hour. Right? This is similar to your KMPL, what we define kilometer per liter. In this context, let's define a term kilometer per kilowatt hour, which is zero right now. Now consider a second case in which you are driving very slowly at 20 kmph constant speed or average 20 kmph speed, right? In this case, again, in the same condition of driving, so again, 1000 watt of ox load is being consumed, but there is an additional requirement of 1000 watt of driving power for 20 kilowatt, 20 kilometer speed. It will take around 15 hours to drain the battery now, and range will be 300 kilometers in this case. And efficiency of this system will be 10 kilometer per kilowatt hour. Consider a third case now, when you're driving very fast, right what do you expect so the aux load will be same this is 1000 watts but the driving power will be very high which is 20000 watts now because the speed is very high you know the v square component of aerodynamic losses will come into play and because that is a power it will be v cube term right so driving power consumption will be very high it will take 1.5 hours to drain the complete battery of 30 kilowatt hour usable capacity in this case, the range is 180 kilometer, 
do you see that it has slightly reduced now it was 300 km in earlier case now it's become 180 efficiency in this case is only 6 km per kilowatt hour let's put these things on a graph at 0 km kmph speed your range is 0 at 20 km kmph speed your range is 300 km at 120 kmph speed your range is 180 km so you see some kind of trend is being followed over here so what is happening let's understand so what is the equation of motion in this case where the energy is going let's for the simplicity consider there is the efficiency from battery to wheel which consists of the gearbox losses the motor plus inverter losses some battery efficiency losses combined in a single term battery to wheel efficiency then a second term dc dc efficiency loss because the the high voltage has to be converted in low voltage there's some losses over there as well then there's regeneration efficiency because all the energy kinetic energy available is not tightly converted to the regeneration power because sometime the brake frictional brakes also come into play we'll talk about that so the driving power can be given by this equation in which the first term becomes a total resistive force we talked about this second term is gradient load right third is inertial load fourth term is the brake recuperation so higher the brake recuperation the lesser the energy is right but if you see these two terms are combining and becoming the inertial losses multiplied by the velocity that becomes a power one additional term is coming at the end which is the aux power law defined as w now in this case you may ask why i am defined why i am dividing rightly by dc dc because compressor is also consumed which is from hv side but for simplicity let's consider that over there itself so this is the aux load now you can define the driving energy in terms of water per kilometer defined by driving power divided by average driving speed in this case just divide by v over here right the equation gets slightly modified and the v term comes at the below portion in this equation right it was not here but it comes on the below portion the equation become very interesting now the range you, how you can calculate the range in this case the usable battery capacity divided by the energy driving energy you get the kilometer range similarly what we defined the previously also the kilometer per kilowatt hour driving efficiency term you can directly calculate by thousand divided by in this driving energy term right so this equation becomes very important for us and it's very easy to solve we can solve the range equation also but it's very intuitive to solve this equation let's understand in detail so if we just put that equation in a simple spreadsheet and define the abc coefficients acceleration terms efficiency terms and all in a simple spreadsheet you can model the range of the vehicle right if you want to complete model a drive cycle also you can perform a drive cycle also because equation are going to remain the same and you can calculate the acceleration in that term right now i'm considering a constant acceleration just for representative purpose so let's understand in this equation what is the impact of aux load right let's consider three cases 100 watts aux load 500 watt aux load and 1500 watt aux load in the first case this is the equation of range you see the curve it's increasing then decreasing let's consider for 500 again you see some shift is happening the max value is decreasing but there's some shifting also is happening third case 1500 watts to see some pattern over here if you see the peak point of efficiency is shifting initially it was around 12 kilometer right later on become 22 kilometer and then become 35 kilometer uh, kmph sorry kmph right so that speed point is shifting so at which speed you'll get the maximum range is shifting earlier with low aux load you were getting the max range at 12 kilo kmph itself right but now when the aux load is increasing your max range you are getting at 35 kmph it's not at the same point everything else is same just switching the aux load so the way you are driving the vehicle in summer condition or cold condition is changing your sweet operating point of electric vehicle it's very important to see this let's consider one more parameter uh, now if you want to find this optimum point you can directly uh, the equation we defined earlier you can just take a derivative of this point at this particular point the derivative is zero based on that you can solve and you can find the velocity of this particular point right let's consider one more case what is the impact of cdn frontal area in the range right 
Let's consider again range versus speed graph and see for an aerodynamic vehicle like Tesla, you see this kind of curve. And you see this is a more of a flat curve when you don't find from low speed to high speed, there's not much difference. So you find this is around 220 and this is value is around 140 or so. So there is a some drop. But if you talk about a SUV kind of vehicle, the drop is much more higher, right? With respect to speed. When you talk about minivan kind of vehicle or cargo vehicle and all, the speed is further higher. Imagine when you're driving in peak efficiency point, you're, you're getting a range of 220 kilometers. For a minivan, if you drive it at 120 km, you'll get only 80 kilometers, right? It's, it's three times, the difference is around three times. So the impact of aerodynamics is coming at high speeds. That's why majority of the OEMs, when they talk about long range, they're trying to reduce their coefficient of drag. That's a major reason because you want your high range vehicle for a highways. We are going to drive fast where this impact of speed is coming at the most because you're driving at fast speed. You see this. So a very aerodynamic vehicle will have a least impact in terms of range, but a very bad aerodynamic vehicle where the frontal area is higher, the CD is higher, have a huge difference between CD and highway range. Right? Let's understand in more detail. Coming back to our question over here. So which will be the efficient route? Let's understand the route also in detail. Let's see the route B in this case. The time spent on this route B is 62 minutes. If you calculate the average speed based on the kilometer, which is 40 kilometer and the average speed comes out with 38 kmph. In this route, there are more braking events. You can see from the route itself, you will understand that. So there are more e-vacuum pump activated. It's not an ice engine vehicle. The ice engine vehicle may that's driven by the engine. In EVs, we have a vacuum pump or an eye booster system for engagement also that consumes energy. So when you are braking more, the energy is going in that. When you are braking, the tail light is also getting activated, the brake light that also can consuming the energy, right? And there is a more loss in regenerative braking. We have seen in the previous equation that the minus term, there is a regenerative efficiency. So and higher the regenerative, higher the braking events, higher the loss. Some people think that if I have more regeneration events, more braking events, my regeneration efficiency is better. It's not like that. Best efficiency is driving in constant route with no brakes at all because you are giving and taking back energy again and again. There is a loss in between, right? In this case, since there are more twist and turn, if you see the route itself, right? So what will happen? The steering motor is also consuming the power. The more you are twisting and turning, the motor will consume the power. Since the twist and turns are there, when the tire is rotating, there will be a slip angle. At a constant straight route, the slip angle is zero. When the, there is a twist and turn, the slip angle will be higher, the rolling resistance will be higher. Lesser speed due to possibly bad route, it's possible, right? That's why the speed is low on this road. Possibly because of bad route, the rolling resistance again higher. And since the time duration is higher, the, the energy lost in the aux losses is also higher, right? Now, finally, the speed is low, so the aerodynamic losses are lesser. Let's talk about the route A, just reverse of this, right? So time spent is 47 minutes, but the average speed is higher than the previous case, which is up to 52 kmph. In this case, there are lesser braking events, so lesser e vacuum pump activation, lesser tail light activation, lesser lo energy loss in regenerative braking, because there are very less uh, braking events in this case. Low twist and turn, so there is lesser steering power consumption because steering power is more, so time is straight, right? Lesser rolling resistance because of lesser slip angle change. And we are expecting this to be a highway, so rolling resistance, a road is very good, so resistance also will be lesser from tires. And since the time spent is lesser, the energy lost in the aux load is also lesser because 1000 watt is constant, right? We are considering the watts are constant in this case, we are assuming that. So that is multiplied with the time is total energy. Again, since this is a high speed case, so aerodynamic losses will be higher. Let's understand again. If we compare root A and root B, you will find that most of the cases, root A is better. Only aerodynamic losses are higher in this case. But for other cases, root B is bad because of lesser speed aerodynamic losses are better. Right. If you just do a pre from the previous equation what we discussed, 
if you just do some calculation you will find that range in this pattern now since we have considered assumption over here we talked about this because there are more twists and turns more bad road more slip angles and everything let's consider an increase of road resistance by 5% and increase a decrease in the region efficiency by 5% right in this case let's consider that ox load has been increased because of brake lights steering power and so and so forth vacuum pump 300 became 350 in this case so we're considering 50 watts higher right if you see the range in this condition more or less both are similar we expected this to be higher right but it's not the case this is slightly better that depends on the road condition again over here but if you see this is slightly better it's not that this is efficient route now if there is a heating or cooling events which are happening and consider 1000 watt extra is going by the cabin cooling or battery cooling in this case the range is better in this case in the highway case because that energy when you're spending more time on road itself the energy loss in the ox load is much more higher right you're seeing very less difference over here because we have considered a very small capacity of the battery which is 30 kilowatt hour usable right let's see and understand in more detail can you drive by choice so everything was good in route a if you drive on the route a itself with this constant speed what will happen with this speed if you drive on route a in that case the average ox slot will be remain same because no braking event nothing so we are considering same 300 right since the average speed lesser see this the range goes up like anything so if you're driving on a highway consciously with a better this one you get a higher range even with the ac on or heating is on you get a better range over here so you should drive on a highway with with uh, optimum speed now what is optimum speed right at what optimum speed we discussed about it for a sedan kind of vehicle the optimum speed was different for a mpv kind of vehicle load carrier kind of vehicle this optimum speed might be different let's see in detail let's see a comparison over here again for a cooling or heating case if you see my aerodynamic vehicle is giving me better range on a highway right then the this cycle but same way if i am driving an electric van kind of vehicle heavy vehicle i am getting better range on slower road where the speeds are lesser right very interesting to see this again in the second case if my heating and cooling is on if you see this becomes comparable but again my sedan kind of vehicle or maybe more aerodynamic kind of vehicle i'm getting more range on highway itself than this because this is lesser impacted by the speed right but it is more impacted by the loss which you're having from the ox load so we are getting more range over here right it's very interesting to see this but is this actual range simulations the answer is no when we do the range simulation we consider multiple more things what is the motor efficiency map what is the gearbox efficiency map what is the operating point how the battery cooling is happening battery heating logics thermal limit electrical limits how the cabin cooling is happening the optimization of that control logic for low voltage consumption what is the battery c rating because you cannot pump in complete energy in the regeneration what is the thermal limits when the battery cooling will kick in what is the brake blending strategy because you have friction brake also you have a regeneration also what is the strategy of blending them what is the regeneration map because customer should not feel discomfort that my regeneration is too much and i am breaking too much then the resistive load itself what we talk about the co zone for the function of speed and temperatures because with temperature the density changes right the tire impact changes the drive profile how the customer is driving is a rash driver smooth driver what is the acceleration pattern what's the road gain everything so when the actual range simulation we do the everything is combined but the previous consideration the equation which we showed earlier to you it is very good thing for a start for basic understanding to understand the physics what is happening right these are the complications which will happen later on but you should understand what is going in the basics that's all from my side for today thanks a lot for this attending this i hope this might have helped you understand more about the range of the electric vehicle thank you